Hello, and thank you for joining us for the Zenata Consulting Beginner Series. Today, we're talking about CRM, and specifically, we're going to talk about how to set up a blueprint inside of a CRM. I'm Brett Martin. And I'm Tyler Colts. And before we get going, I do want to ask if you do find this video useful, please be sure to subscribe and like down below. That really helps us out, and it'll make sure you see our future videos. And with that, let us just jump right in. So today we'll be talking through setting up blueprints. Um, blueprints are basically a structured way to move a CRM record through a process. Um, so first we'll kind of jump into how to set them up and then we'll take a look at a deal that's in a blueprint and kind of how it works when you are navigating that. So to get started, we'll jump into the settings up here in the top right under the little cog. And we'll go under the process management tab and jump into blueprints. And so we'll go ahead and create our first here in our demo account. And we'll give it a name. So maybe we want to call this our standard sales process. We're going to base it on a module. So you could have blueprints running on all different modules in your CRM controlling different processes here. In this case, we'll do one on deals. Um, they are specific to a layout. So we'll use our standard layout here. And then we have to determine which field this blueprint should control. And the ones that are going to show up here are going to be all the different pick lists that you have inside of that record. Because the blueprint is going to basically move you from one pick list option to the next. Uh, so for here, we'll go ahead and enter this based on stage. Now, if you wanted to control and only have certain types of deals or certain types of records enter a blueprint, you can do that with these criteria. So, you know, we've seen in the past, a client will have like a big deal blueprint, where if you create a deal and it's over $20,000, then there's a more structured process that needs to be in place. Um, so you can use all different types of controls to set that up exactly how you need it. So now that we've kind of done our initial setup here, we'll go ahead and jump into the interface. So the blueprints basically run like little flowcharts that you use to guide a process. So over here on the right-hand side, um, we'll see the name that we gave this, as well as the module and basic information. And then we'll also see this list of states. So a state is just one of the options in your pick list. <clears throat> it's basically a place that a record could be at a given point in time. So uh, before we get into building this, um, one of the big purposes for doing a blueprint is making sure that records are complete and basically giving someone kind of a guided template for what they need to do to get to the next stage. So as Tyler mentioned earlier, let's say it was a deal over X amount of dollars and that happened. There's additional information that you absolutely have to have. The deal can't even progress. Nothing can happen on it until that information is entered into the CRM. So this kind of locks things down in the CRM, if you will, until those, that data is put in and put in properly. Exactly. And so let's go ahead here and kind of jump into our blueprint. So we'll drag these stages in and we'll start with the first one that the deal is going to be in. It's going to order these top to bottom following your pipeline. So I'll grab the first one here for qualification, which is basically the first stage of our deal. And blueprints do a lot of their work in the transitions between each state. So right here, I just have one state in here. I can't really connect it to anything or do anything with it quite yet. But once I bring in the needs analysis stage and I make the connection between the two, now I can start to do a lot of these actions to control the process. And so I might say before we're going to do a qualification or as we're doing qualification, there's certain data that we need to capture in order to know if it's worth doing a needs analysis. Right, maybe you have to bring in an engineer and there's more of a cost basis to do this second meeting. So you want to set up a first meeting, do some qualification and only if necessary, move them forward to needs analysis. And so to start actually requiring those fields we will create a transition between these two states. So if I go ahead and click plus here, we'll give our transition a name. I'll call this qualified deal for now. Now there's a couple options here. I'll cover them real quick. We won't use a ton of them in this process. You can make things an automated or an automatic transition, which basically will mean that um, if you want this to automatically go a certain way after a certain point in time, you can do that. 
Oftentimes people will set up like a closed lost or inactive to be automatic. So if something is just sitting in a state for 20 days, bump it over to lost because now it's too old. So you can actually set up a couple of those catch-alls here in your blueprints, but for now we'll focus on just the core stuff. So a couple things here now that we've got our transition. So the main thing we can look at here is who should be able to do this transition. In this case, we have the record owner and of course anyone above them in the hierarchy, as well as some criteria. So if we want to say that certain transitions should only be available for certain types of records, we can set that up here. <clears throat> now we can move over to the during actions. And you can think about the during actions as things that are now required or part of making this transition. So these can be anything from requiring that they leave a note, adding an attachment or adding a tag. And then you can also do things like require fields, display info messages, uh, require that associated items like tasks or future meetings are created. You can set up checklists, which are really just reminders. Uh, we recommend using tasks rather than checklists nine times out of 10. But if you wanted to say, hey, confirm that you check these three things before you proceed, you can do that. And then you can embed custom widgets as parts of these blueprints. But for now, we're going to skip over those ones because those require a little bit of back end coding. The main one that we see people use the most often here, and like Brett's mentioning earlier, for like making sure you have that data is requiring fields. And so in this case, you know, in our demo account here, we've set up a couple of fields that are oftentimes used for qualification. So maybe a quick thing that we want to define is what is their budget? When do they need this done by? Their time frame to complete this. And then maybe we also want to make sure we know the deal type, which in this case is going to be either a new build or a renovation. And so basically what we're looking to do here is say that in order to get to this next step, we need to define these fields on the deal and make sure that this is actually worth proceeding to that next step. Um, oftentimes what we'll do as well is go into the after section here and actually set up some automated things that will happen following this step. And so maybe in this case, if we're gonna say that a deal has been qualified, Right, maybe we want to automatically make a task to schedule needs analysis team within one day of us moving this. And we can assign this either to a specific user or to the record owner of this deal. And so you can kind of build out a lot of these processes that happen in the real world, which is capturing certain important pieces of data notifying people and scheduling tasks, all just by moving these deals through the various transitions from state to state. Alrighty, and so we went ahead here and just built out the rest of this quick little blueprint here to take a look at together, and then we'll jump over to a deal and actually walk it through this process. Um, most of these transitions we've added are pretty similar to the first one that we did together. Right, so when we're moving from needs analysis to proposal price quote, we're requiring a few more pieces of information and then creating a task to generate that proposal. Once we're moving to um, the negotiation and review after we've sent this out, we've got a new transition that will require the attachment of the proposal, as well as kind of a general note about thoughts or any key parts of that proposal we think are relevant. And then lastly, here we have a decision after negotiation to either go to closed lost or closed one, where closed one is actually going to require the amounts and where we've actually set up that it will automatically stamp the closing date as the current date when we move something to closed one. Now there's one other last little note here. You may notice that the close lost transition is blue. That's because in this transition, we selected to make it a common transition, meaning that it can be used from multiple different states. Because at any point in this process, someone could tell us we're not moving forward and we don't wanna to have to arbitrarily walk it through the whole process to get to close lost. And so this here has now been published in our CRM. And so we'll go ahead now and jump over to the deals and actually create one and walk through this process.
All right, Tyler. And now you have uh, created a brand new deal and it is in the blueprint settings right now. Yep. So we are in the deal page and we'll notice that, you know, if you look at a standard or a different deal over here, that's not inside of the blueprint. Um, so one of these just old kind of demo pre-existing deals, we'll see that these actually are moving through the kind of traditional deal stages here up at the top. But now that we've created a blueprint and entered this record into it, you're now only going to move through those stages based on the buttons that are presented by the blueprint. And so as we go here, we'll go ahead and jump in. We'll see that the two transitions I have available are qualified deal or closed lost. Again, because that closed lost is universal to every different step. And so I'll go ahead and start the qualification. After here, taking a look at the record, right? We'll see that we have our sections for the qualification info as well as the needs information, but none of those have been filled in as this is kind of a brand new deal. And so here I'll go ahead and start to qualify this. Now in our qualification, because we've defined these fields, it's actually gonna require that we give a budget. So maybe their budget is thousands. They need this done by, you know, a little bit into February and this is a new build. And so once I go ahead and save this, we'll see that we've now moved to needs analysis. Down below, we've captured that info that we need of budget, deal type, and the time frame. And then lastly here, we'll see that it's actually created that task for me to schedule the needs analysis team. Um, again, you know, you could imagine the sales rep is doing three or four qualification meetings back to back. And then at the end, they've got these three or four tasks to go ahead and schedule the relevant team. And they can kind of just do all of that at once. I'll go ahead and complete this for now. And we can kind of walk through some of the next steps of our blueprint. And so of course, our next step here that we've, now that we're in the needs analysis stage, we're gonna complete that analysis. We're gonna give it a needs level, which these are just kind of some arbitrary fields that we put in here. So we'll call this extreme. And they really need their stuff redone. Not super descriptive. Uh, you know, an enablement team probably wouldn't be too happy with that. But for a demo, I think it's, uh, it'll keep us moving here. Again, as our next step, it's created that follow on task to generate a proposal. And so we'll have that kind of ready to go for, um, you know, maybe I'm going to do that in batch and I want to grab all those later. You know, I'll have that available to me. And so now I'll go ahead and just close out this generate proposal task. And we'll move on to our next step here to send the proposal. At this step, we have a couple other options. So we've got some more unstructured notes. So, you know, this client was really excited to get their proposal. And then here it's actually requiring that I go ahead and attach a file. So, you know, you can pull these from, you know, Work Drive, Google Drive, or URL if you've got it hosted externally. In this case, I'm just going to grab any old PDF off my desktop and add that in here. Just a good, uh, good old W9 template. And I'll save that. And so now we'll see that we've actually added that note here to the system standard notes. Our proposal, doing some air quotes here, has been added to the attachment section. And now we've moved over to this negotiation and review stage where eventually we can determine if this was closed one or closed lost. Now, the last thing I do wanna highlight here, we'll go ahead and do the, the best case scenario and we'll say that we won this, is that when I go to close one, we already have an amount in the deal. And we have a closing date, but it's in the past. So this is January 1st. We're recording this on January 5th. But once I go ahead and move this to closed one, because I've required amount, it's going to ask me to verify it. So maybe we upsold them a little bit, and now it's at 1500 And then because I have an automated action in that transition, our closing date has been automatically updated to January 5th. So you don't have to force them to re-enter that at this point if the closing date got shifted around a little bit in the sales process. And I don't think we can stress enough the power of blueprints. Um, oftentimes, one of the things we see is that data inside CRMs is just a mess. 
people aren't putting in the data that they need. It's not in the right spot. Things don't get updated, especially closing date. That's just a huge one that never gets properly updated. And by using blueprints, you can make sure that your data is structured, that your team is putting in the data that you need to run your business. And they're just super, super powerful, very simple to use. So we hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And as always, we would love if you would click subscribe down below and like this video if you found it useful. That really helps us out and it'll make sure that YouTube shows you our videos in the future as we continue to put out helpful guides like this one. Thanks again for watching.